Hello everybody. I want to begin by saying thanks and praise be to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you Father for vouchsafing these things which I'm about to show my audience here. And before I begin, I want to talk about my audience, who it is and who it isn't. This is not for anybody who believes that what you see on the news is true and reliable. Nothing for you to see here so you can go your way. Do you believe we live on a globe? There's nothing for you to see here you can go your way. This video is for those who know that there is much, much evil in our media today, courtesy of a certain cabal that we call the Synagogue of Satan those who say they are Jews but aren't. And those of you who are still with me, you will not regret spending some time here. I'll try to wrap this up within 15 minutes. So, let's begin. Gilligan's Island, what was that show all about? Three seasons, exactly three seasons it ran. A show where the outcome was predictable, they never got off the island, Gilligan screwed things up every single time, utterly insipid, banal entertainment, yet three seasons worth, exactly three seasons. Well, as it turns out, what I discovered was that there is an occult symbology in all of this, with this show. And what I'm going to do is nothing short of exposing their great work. No, I'm not an initiate. I don't belong to any secret fraternity. I consider everyone to be my brother and sister, provided they're not antichrists. If they're antichrists, well, and certainly, what communion hath light with darkness? So then, this is a uh, one publicity photo of several that were taken in a single photo shoot. This is another and this is yet another almost the same as this one here but of course some very obvious differences in facial expressions and postures. Here of course they're all smiling looking at the camera relaxed and such not exactly in character Yes, they're clothed as the characters were clothed, but their facial expressions were not. But here, of course, now we have the professor with his straight brow, sort of studious look, and Thurston and Howell, Thirst and Howell, Wall Street to Wolf. He's sad because he's away from all of his business ventures on the mainland, and of course his enormous wealth is of no use to him on this island. You have his wife, lovey, with an expression that looks like a deer caught in the headlights. She's holding a parasol. I'll get back to that in a moment, why it's significant. And Ginger here looks like a femme fatale and square broad shoulders somewhat in the tranny zone. I don't want to make a big fuss about that, but uh, a few of you out there will know what I'm getting at. And the skipper, kind of chubby guy. My little buddy. Uh, he's here for a good reason in this position. And Marianne, another sort of deer in the headlights look. And Gilligan with his, oh boy, woe is me, I keep screwing things up. We're always stuck on the island because I goofed again, blah, blah, blah. Well, I thought about why they chose these people to represent America. Seven stranded castaways. Now we've got Gilligan the first mate and the skipper of the SS Minnow. And um, we have a cross-section of America here pretty much. We have the intellectual and the not-so-intellectual Professor and Gilligan. We have the very wealthy man and I guess, well, she wouldn't be wealthy. Male, female, young and old. Pretty good cross-section, more or less. I think she's a farm girl, I believe, or something like that. And Gilligan had his 
friend Skinny Mulligan, whatever his name was. She's the movie star, the celebrity. So there's a pretty good cross-section of America here. But then I, I looked at their pose and there's something about it that just I found peculiar. And I thought, well, if they represent America, what happens if I take a map of America and put it over top of this picture? So let's do that. It's upside down. Now it's upside down for a reason. They're castaways, they're in crisis. Now America is in crisis, upside down. Everything is upside down in that country, right? Topsy-turvy, chaotic, nonsense, mess. It's fitting to be upside down, and I positioned it so that the Mississippi, seeing as ginger is obviously the pinnacle of this somewhat pyramidical pose, with a bunch of them. She is certainly the focus from the top and coming right down to Gilligan here. His head's right in front of her crotch as if, you know, his head's coming out of her birth canal. And look at her hand here. Let's go back. You can see all four fingers on that one. Suddenly, Gilligan's hat is obscuring her two middle fingers, so now it looks as if, as if, she's giving him the horns here. Look at the skipper's arm here. It runs right along the state lines. And let's put the state names up now. It runs right along the state lines between Arkansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Kansas, and Iowa, Nebraska. And then it makes a turn with his hand here, right where South Dakota and Nebraska meet. It's all very, very neat, very, very conveniently packed. We got the rock here now in the western states where the Rockies would be in this area here. The Rockies come through here, right? Right along here. Not exactly, right, but pretty close. It's in the west. Marianne. She has a name which is very common for Latinos. Marianne, or Mary, and Maria. She's got New Mexico on her. Her head is actually in Mexico, south of New Mexico and Texas here. Here's where Mexico would be right up here. The, the actress Don Wells, interestingly enough, uh, she was Miss Nevada back in the 60s, or I think sometime in that decade. The state of Nevada is right on her lap. Hmm. Idaho on her thigh here. The skipper, or sorry, the professor, right where all the most prestigious universities are, Harvard, Yale, Cornell, etc. They're all here in New England, right? They're all around here. And here he is, the professor. The Sunshine State, Florida here. And she's got a parasol right over the Sunshine State. Hmm, coincidence, perhaps, right? All right. Someone could say, well, we'll stick around. Ginger, the Mississippi, right up along her torso. Let's put the state capitals up here now. Baton Rouge, red stick, French for red stick. Baton Rouge, right on her heart here. Redhead, red lipstick, Baton Rouge there. You'll notice the uh, Mr. Howell, he's nowhere on the mainland. He doesn't enter the mainland at all. See? Because uh, he's a tycoon, right? Not common law, law of the high seas, maritime law, corporate law. No, no, no none of him is on the mainland. But his wife, Lovey here, she's the face of Florida. Like Florida wearing a wig. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, but there it is. Madison. Right above Madison is Gilligan's watch. Time represented Kronos, Kronos, Saturn, Saturn, Kronos, right? Mm-hmm. Look at the colors here. She's all in red. The skipper's all in blue, and she's in white. This whole area here, if I'm not mistaken, was part of what we call the Louisiana Purchase. Remember history, Louisiana Purchase? You turn this upside down, you have the blue, white, and red of the French flag. Very interesting. Now it's the red, white, and blue of Americans' flag. Red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Now look at all this red here. You know, if there was ever a race war in America, this is where most of the bloodshed would be, I'm thinking. It just, just, you know, most of it here. And people out here probably don't have too much to worry about. Not so much. And you'll notice that California doesn't even make it on the map here. And Western coastal states here. 
Again, I position it so that the very 49th parallel here would be at the bottom. This photo was cropped by the publisher of the photo, not myself. Gilligan's blue pants are right where Lake Superior is. Let's put that apron back up there for a moment. See right there? That's where Gilligan's pants are. Here's Lake Superior. And look, they have water underneath the arch there and an altar there. All right, so let's put that back up there now. So, what do we have here now? I got, let's say, five, four and a half minutes to finish here, and I plan on finishing. So, look at her uh, hand here, index finger drawn back. Otherwise, it'd be pointing to the Yacht Club crest he has here on his blazer. Look at all these capital cities. You see, here's Washington right on the professor's shoulder, close to his collar. And, um, oh look, Salt Lake City is right where Marianne's crotch is. Her breasts, her nipples are pointing right to Las Vegas. And look at Phoenix here, all sort of out in the clear. And um, there is one capital that I haven't uh, put here yet. Now, uh, let's see, it's, uh, oh yeah, Springfield. Springfield, Illinois. Now, it's interesting that Gilligan's face is perfectly framed by the state of Illinois. Perfectly in there. And I thought, why is it strange? Why did Springfield end up being right where it is? And again, anyone can confirm this with their own map. You can see that's where Springfield is. You just take your own map and look. And I thought, that's amazing. Here's the guy that's fouled everything up. He's the bumbling idiot that keeps ruining their chance of rescue. Just like Obama. He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything for that country. He didn't do anything for America. He, it was just a pipe dream. Everyone was just wishful thinking. He did squat, right? He, he's a Gilligan, all right. And the funny thing is, well, he came from Illinois, right? Was he a governor or something? Or was that where he came from? Illinois, his political career was there. And well, let's, um, let's get Obama in there. And see, when I put Obama's face with Gilligan's face there, I mean, the Springfield Star is right where Obama's mole is. Very interesting. Very interesting. Some kind of accident, right, I guess. Probably not. And while we're at it here, why don't we just uh, show people what this man really is. Sacrificial goat. Right over the altar there. You know? And, uh, you know, The Simpsons seems to always be giving us the heads up about things that are about to happen in the States. So, uh, yeah, here we got Montgomery Burns, Montgomery, Alabama, Montgomery Burns. Yeah, what would, I think Montgomery would uh, surely be burning if they do what uh, this indicates they're going to be doing. Hans Molman. The mole man. Oh yes, Obama. I call Obama a mole man. Certainly a mole. He's got a mole. He is a mole. He's a plant. He wasn't elected. He was appointed. Well, we got a minute and a half here. All right. So let's see what else. What else is very notable about this? Uh, did I cover just about everything? Oh yes. You know the Masonic eye, uh, apron with the eye here. You see the eye right here. Little Rock. Rock and roll. Elvis Presley. Nashville. The goat, the goat, the sacrificial goat. So everybody, here it is, in summary. In summary. The inauguration day is coming. I can't imagine this could be uneventful. I don't want to be a date setter or anything. But the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 3, talks about a beast getting a mortal head wound. Hmm, I'm wondering. Okay, listen, anyone that has any uh, comments, questions, please feel free to post them. Remember, this is not for you if you're one of those people who believes we live on a ball, believes everything in the news, likes to watch MTV, etc., etc. It's not for you. If you're one of the uh, Pepsi generation, this is not for you. You know, the Pepsi, PSYOP. All right, folks, thanks and praise be to God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Seeing's not believing. Faith cometh by hearing. If you see someone miraculously survive a fatal head wound, don't believe it's a miracle. It's a fraud.